Every single player over the past 10 years has had some sort of comparison when entering the NBA draft. Some have been spot on, and these players have turned out to be exactly how scouts expected. And then there's others that have been flat out terrible, and didn't make any sense back then and still don't now. And those are the ones we're looking at today. Now all these comparisons came from NBADraft.net, and of course I get it'd be impossible for them to predict everyone's career perfectly, but that's the fun part, that's why we're looking back to see just how wrong these scouts were based on how these players turned out. And we're going to look at all the bad comparisons from all of the past 10 years from 2008 to 2017. There's more from some and less from others, but at least one from every draft. So with that being said, let's start with 2008, with Jared Bayless. Most of the casual NBA fans probably don't even know who Jared Bayless is, but if you do know him, you know he's never been more than a decent bench player that's bounced around a bunch of teams the past 10 years. But coming into the league, the hopes were a lot higher for him, because going into the draft, Bayless was getting compared to Gilbert Arenas and Jay Williams. I mean, from how he played in college, it kinda makes sense, but for how he's played in the NBA, they couldn't have been any more wrong. I mean, Arenas was an elite scorer and playmaker, and Bayless is a good corner three-point shooter. And then the other bad comparison from 2008 was Michael Beasley. And you know that someone who played as good as Beasley did in college, and wound up as bad as he has been, had to be on the list for the comparisons he was getting while at Kansas State. Beasley had one of the best college seasons ever, putting up 26-12 and 12 on 56% shooting and 38% from three. He was so dominant as a freshman that he ended up getting comparisons to Carmelo Anthony. And his first few years, those comparisons had flashes where they looked accurate, but pretty much ever since then he couldn't be any further from it. So with the way his career ended up, this one's just been horrible. And then we go to 2009 with Hashim Thabit. Alright, Thabit was an okay player on offense, just scoring over all the smaller players, and a dominant 7'3 shot blocker on defense in college. Which is why he got drafted second overall and drew his draft comparisons to Dikembe Mutombo. Hashim dominated on defense defense and averaged over 4 blocks a game for his 3 years at UConn. But just because a 7 foot 3 guy is able to block a lot of college players, doesn't mean he needed to be picked 2nd overall or compared to an NBA Hall of Famer, because besides that he really didn't know what he was doing. Speaking of 2nd overall picks who turned out to be a bust, that leads us to 2010 with Evan Turner, who got compared to Brandon Roy. Now if Turner lived up to the hype, there's a good chance these comparisons would have made sense, but he didn't. He did have one of the more dominant seasons in college too. He was athletic, good around the rim, could shoot pretty well, and was honestly being considered to be taken over John Wall. But the second he got into the NBA, that all changed. He instantly looked like an average athlete compared to his competition, stagnant on offense, and his game's never really been able to translate into an NBA game. I mean, everyone that gets drafted looks great in college, but not everyone can be a star in the NBA. 2011. First with Ennis Cantor. This one doesn't make sense for back then, and it still doesn't make sense now. Because Ennis Cantor's comparison was Al Horford. Horford's a player that can do a little bit of everything, block shots, rebound, pass, shoot mid-range and threes, and post up. But when we think of Cantor, we usually think of just a traditional big man. I do think Cantor's been heavily underrated for a while, but not that underrated. He doesn't play the same style or as good as Al Horford. Clay Thompson. Alright, th this is definitely one of the worst comparisons on the list, and possibly of all time, because Clay Thompson's comparison was Marco Bellinelli. Bellinelli's pretty much been known his whole career as just a three-point shooter, and Clay's turned out to be not only a 100 times better, but one of the greatest shooters of all time. Back then, his weakness was said to have been his athleticism, but that hasn't stopped him from being one of the best defenders and players in general in the league for all these years. And the fact that scouts had Clay Thompson turning into a guy like Bellinelli is just hilarious to look back at at this point. Kawhi Leonard. Alright, honestly this one's not too bad, with Kawhi getting compared to Luke Maba Mute and Gerald Wallace. Kawhi's offense, even to this day, is a similar style to what Gerald Wallace had, and his defense is similar to Maba Mute. Now he's 10 times better at both of those things than both of those guys, but it's still a pretty solid comparison, especially with the players that had been in the league to that point. I mean, he really should have been compared to Scottie Pippen, but he didn't. 
but he made the video for how much better he became than these guys, and for his draft report, saying things like this. Kawhi Leonard does not have one aspect offensively that stands out, or which allows him to consistently score the ball. He does not have a great touch around the basket, and is not very disciplined on defense. He gambles far too often, and leaves his teammates susceptible to giving up easy baskets. We're talking about the best defender in the league. The guy who has more steals than fouls. So they definitely got this one wrong too. Tobias Harris. Okay, we've seen Tobias turn into a star this year, and we've seen how good of a scorer he's become. I mean, even back in high school, he was a five-star recruit and played as a point forward in college. But even through that, draft comparison still compared him to Chris Humphreys. Come on now, this is getting out of hand. I get it, you can't predict how good everyone's gonna get. But when you're off by that much, someone needs to be fired. All right, now let's look at 2012. The one and only player is Draymond Green. And, and this makes sense because Draymond wasn't great in high school, wasn't a standout in college, and was drafted in the second round. And even then, his career started out pretty slow. So we can't really blame anyone for this one, but the man was compared to Jared Dudley going into the draft. And I mean, they both had similar styles and weren't the most athletic. So I'd say they did a decent job of judging him as a player back then, but a terrible job of judging his potential. And now we got a lot from 2013. First with Cody Zeller. Big things were expected from Zeller who went 4th overall in 2013. But I still don't think he should have been compared to LaMarcus Aldridge. And by the way things have turned out, he shouldn't have. His draft report said that there was a very little chance that he'd be a bust. And I guess they were kinda wrong there. Because up until now he's been nothing more than an average center in the NBA. Victor Oladipo. So now we got the other member of the 2012 and 13 Indiana team. And this one's terrible too. With Oladipo getting compared to Tony Allen. Victor has always been a great defender, and he did take time to develop his offensive game, but his report said that he didn't have a complete offensive game and might not ever develop one. And with him getting those comparisons to Tony Allen, shows you just how bad they thought his offense was and could have become. We've seen just how good Oladipo's gotten on that end, and just how wrong he's proven these scouts to be. Ben McLemore, another worst of the video and possibly one of the worst all time. Here's a quote from McLemore's draft report. He's a prototypical two guard with a mouthwatering combination combination of athleticism and shooting ability. Has elite level NBA two guard potential with the talent to eventually place himself among the top shooting guards in the league in his prime. And they compared him to Ray Allen. I mean seriously, he did look good in college, but now he's looking like he's on his way out of the league. He's still a good shooter and athletic, but has nothing else great about his game, and is the furthest thing from Ray Allen that you could get. CJ McCollum. In college, McCollum was a great scorer and three-point shooter, but not enough to be compared to Steph Curry, which he was. I mean, to be fair, the comparison was made right before Curry made his first All-Star team and turned into the greatest shooter of all time and the two-time MVP we know today. But still, looking at what both these players have become, scouts had it all wrong. Rudy Gobert. Gobert is one of the top defenders in the league right now, but started out getting compared to Sean Bradley, the 7'6 man who didn't have an ounce of athleticism in his body and was in the league only for his height. But this comparison comes from the fact that Gobert has one of the tallest standing reaches and biggest wingspans in combine history and was pretty skinny at the time of being drafted. I mean, they did mention how Gobert was a good rim protector, but come on, he still deserved better than Sean Bradley. 2014 with Andrew Wiggins. We all know that media and fans compared Wiggins to LeBron and KD, and some sites had him compared to a mixture of Tracy McGrady and Clyde Drexler. But NBADraft.net had him as a cross between Vince Carter and Rudy Gay. Not gonna lie, this isn't the worst comparison, but I did just have to mention him for all the other comparisons he got out of college and high school. Dante Exum. There were big hopes for Exum as a 6'6 point guard coming from Australia. And there usually always is for a point guard that big. Pause. And those guys usually get compared to Penny Hardaway, which is what happened to Dante. I mean, just because they're tall doesn't mean they're always going to be great all-around players like Hardaway was. And Exum has made that very, very clear. He went 5th overall, but has never really been a starter or averaged over 8 points a game. And it definitely doesn't look like he ever will. Marcus Smart. Easily one of the worst in the video, with Marcus Smart being compared to Dwayne Wade. If it hasn't been clear already, this is why college is deceiving a lot of the time. Because the best athletes can make their games look a lot better than they actually are by being faster and stronger than most other players at their positions. 
but I mean, Dwayne Wade? They couldn't have been any more wrong. Smart has great fundamentals, but he's basically only known for his energy and defense, and not for his Hall of Fame level play. 2015, Justice Winslow. This one's one of the worst and most accurate comparisons at the same time. Scouts compared Justice Winslow to James Harden. They had a similar style when he was in college, but since being in the NBA, they've got absolutely nothing in common. They're completely different players. Harden's a pure scorer, and Winslow's an all-around athletic player with good defense. So he's definitely no James Harden. But you think whoever made this comparison should be fired, but they also compared him to Wilson Chandler, which is also a weird two players to compare someone to. But since Winslow's been in the NBA, he has played a lot like Chandler. So strangely, this one was terrible and great at the same time. Kristaps Porzingis. Kristaps was compared to Andrea Bargnani and Pau Gasol, which really isn't the worst comparison for him, but he just makes a list for the fact that they didn't compare him to Dirk. Like, come on, they're twins. Stanley Johnson. A lot of you might not have ever heard of Stanley Johnson, but he's the Pistons' backup small forward, averaging seven a game for his career. Out of college, though, he got compared to Kawhi Leonard and Ron Artest. Now, don't get me wrong, Stanley's a great underrated defender, but Kawhi and Artest were lockdown defenders and great on offense, too. And Stanley Johnson isn't. So for now, they overrated Johnson by a long shot. 2016, Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram getting compared to Kevin Durant. I mean, do I really need to say anything? Besides their body shape, they got nothing in common as players. And finally, in 2017, we had Kyle Kuzma. Whoever predicted Kyle Kuzma to be a Jared Jeffries type player is insane. For those of you who don't even know who Jeffries is, this is him, and he averaged 4 points and 4 rebounds for his career on 25% from 3. And here is Kuzma, who's already averaged 17 and 6 on 34% from 3 on his career. Sure, Kuzma did surprise everyone, but still, looking back on this, it's terrible. Donovan Mitchell. Speaking of terrible, we've got Donovan Mitchell who was compared to Norman Powell out of college. Norman Powell! In these first two years of Mitchell's career, he's already had a better career than Norman will in his entire career. I mean, Donovan compares a lot better to a star like Dwayne Wade than anything. And it's not even like it took Mitchell years to develop so they wouldn't have known how good he was. He started playing like a star in his rookie season, and just one year before scouts thought he resembled Norman Powell the closest. And finally, Markel Fultz. Here we got the last one, and the fact that Markel Fultz drew comparisons to James Harden. I mean, maybe there was some resemblance in college, but it's just funny to look back on now that this guy was thought to have been the next James Harden. And actually, it's a little depressing. But that's gonna wrap up the video. This one was a little long, but I wanted to get through as many of these as I could. I didn't do any rookies because we gotta give them at least a year to show themselves. But if I did miss any else in the past 10 years, definitely comment them down below and let me know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.